of the cross that my brother shared is so powerful. Is so powerful to the extent that Paul refused to know anything else except the message of the cross. And uh, he, he said he want to know Christ and him crucified. He began to say the message of the cross is so powerful. Hallelujah. And it is important for us to understand that Jesus completed the work of the Christ through the cross. Hallelujah. The work of the Christ was not completed by the resurrection. The work of the Christ became completed by the cross. Hallelujah. So everything they have been laying all along, when they talked about the anointed, they talked about the kings, they talked about the priests, they talked about the prophets, all this that God had been planning from the very beginning became completed on the cross. Hallelujah. And that is why Jesus said it is finished. That was powerful when Jesus said it is finished. And now when we share the message of the cross, it is a message of joy. Hallelujah. Because the issue is solved. Ha. Hallelujah. The issues of Satan is solved. The issue of sin is solved. The issue of man being separated from God is solved. Now when we look at the message of the resurrection, it is a message of joy. It is a message of coming to our senses and beginning to worship God in truth and in spirit. It is a message of beginning to think about it. How he fulfilled everything that was written about him. Hallelujah. It is a message that must humble us and bring us down and begin to call him Lord and begin to worship him. Hallelujah. And that's the message we're going to share today. So in this uh, lecture number 17, we see the evidence that Jesus resurrected. In John chapter 11, verse 25, Jesus began to reveal himself to Martha and Mary when he went to see the burial of Lazarus, his beloved friend who was dead. So his agenda was to raise Lazarus from the dead. But he went for the funeral, praise the Lord. So when he came, he introduced himself. He revealed himself. He said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Hallelujah. Why did he do this? Because if you can know who he is, if you can believe in him, you can take that which is embedded in, his, in him. Hallelujah. So he revealed himself. Say he revealed himself. He revealed himself that he is the resurrection and he is the life. Hallelujah. And so he talked about this while he was still alive. And then in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, he reads, I am the living one. I was dead and now look, I am alive forever and ever. Hallelujah. So when we say Jesus has resurrected, it is very true. It is 100% true. You know, there are some people who, who say that Jesus did not resurrect. They say that his body was stolen. They paid some, some soldiers to spread that lie. The Bible says that that lie is spreading up to now. But I bring you good news. That the one who died is the one who spoke by himself in Revelation. He said, look, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. He spoke, he said, I am a living one. I was dead. But now, look, in other words, see, hallelujah, I am alive. And I'm not just alive for a moment. I am alive forever and ever. Praise the Lord. So, Jesus, resurrection was according to the scripture. Hallelujah. His resurrection was according to the scripture. 
And when I say according to the scripture, I mean the Old Testament scriptures, because by this time, the New Testament scriptures were not written. So uh, last, yesterday we, we had when Pastor Mu was explaining to us how he fulfilled prophecy. So we now understand that here, his resurrection was in fulfillment of the scripture. Hallelujah. So, from yesterday up to now, I am overwhelmed. I want to hear and hear more. How Jesus fulfilled the entire Bible through his life, through the words that he spoke, through his teachings, even in simple things, everything he did was in fulfillment of the scripture, even the resurrection. Hallelujah. That has amazed me, that has overwhelmed me, and I want to hear it more and more. So we see here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 4, that his resurrection on the third day was according to the scriptures. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 20, 21, the Bible says, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. Here we see that this resurrection was as a first fruit for those who have fallen asleep. In other words, he was telling us that he is the first man to rise from the dead. But there is other people coming after him. Hallelujah. Other people are coming after him. Praise the Lord. So he said that he's the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. In Romans chapter 6, verse 9 to 10, the Bible says, We know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death has no longer, death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin, not, I mean, once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. It is important for us to know that he now has mastery over death. He has overcome death. He is a master over death. He will not die again. He will not die forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is indeed alive. Hallelujah. He is indeed alive. He resurrected. The, that's why the Bible says, somebody read for me 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, I mean 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4. But to be sure, he was crucified in weakness, yet released by God's power. Likewise, we are weak in him, yet by God's power we will live with him in our daily with him. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that he was crucified in weakness. The, the ministers have been explained to us that Jesus is God. By the fact that he is the son of God does not mean he is lesser. So he, had, he humbled himself. He became weak even to the point of death on the cross for us. He was crucified in weakness. The Bible says that the life he lives now, he lives by the power of God. And there is something he spoke about you and me, if we really believe in that, that I don't want to go into it, but it is powerful. To get to understand that yet by God's power, we will live with him in our dealings. Somebody read for me 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 42. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is so imperishable, it is raised imperishable. Uh, read for me again 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 54 to 55. And the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. Then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. Oh. Oh. Death is your victory. Oh. Death is your sin. Hallelujah. Here we see a mockery of a death. Hallelujah. 
tormenting. You see, death has been tormenting mankind. Separation from God has been the biggest problem of mankind. And now, because of the resurrection, because of his death and resurrection, the men of God are bold to say that where is your victory? I mean, where all oh death? Where is your victory now? See how you have now been swallowed up. You who has been tormenting us, scaring us, causing trouble to us. Hallelujah. And all this are evidence, proof beyond reasonable doubt, that Jesus resurrected from the dead. Hallelujah. And so his resurrection was a fulfillment of the work of the Christ. Hallelujah. Like I said that the work of the Christ was completed on the cross. But the resurrection became a fulfillment, became a declaration to you and me to believe. Hallelujah. That's why Paul in his preaching in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 17 verse 3, the Bible said he was explaining and proving that the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead. And what does he conclude? He concludes and says that this Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Christ. Hallelujah. So that means that the resurrection was a fulfillment of the work of the Christ that gave the audacity to Paul the Apostle to make it his gospel. It became everything he told the entire world. The evidence he gave that Jesus is the Christ is his death and his resurrection, nothing else. He fulfilled the work of the Christ. Hallelujah. Somebody read Hebrews chapter 13 verse 20. Somebody read, uh, read Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 again. Since the children have flesh and love, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death they might break the power of him who holds the power of death. That is the devil. Hallelujah. Now in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 20, we see that God made peace with us through the blood of the eternal covenant. The resurrection was a proof to us that the sacrifice that Jesus gave on the cross was perfect and it was accepted by God. Hallelujah. It is something that showed me and you how that sacrifice was perfect. How God received that sacrifice. Hallelujah. That's why now Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 explains it now that since the children of flesh and blood it too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death. That is the devil. So we see that the devil has been completely defeated, paralyzed. I don't know how to explain it furthermore. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when uh, the, 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 the preacher that I came after was talking about the cross, my bishop was, was explaining, showing to me how God separated from the Son on the cross. Even when Jesus, the Son of God, was on earth. He was one with the Father. But when the sin of the world came upon the Son on the cross, the Bible says that the Father separated himself from him. In other words, the Son came and joined the sinners. Hallelujah. He became one with the sinners so that he can take all the sinners back to God. Hallelujah. And when he did that, 
he destroyed the devil completely. Hallelujah. If it was not easy to bring us back to God, you know, you understand how the problem of separation was severe. But the resurrection was a proof to us. Hallelujah. Because he joined, he became death together. He died and he became sinners together. He became under the power of the devil. That means that for him to bring us back to the Father, he must have defeated the devil. Yes. Hallelujah. So we see here that the resurrection is a proof, a confirmation to us that Jesus, who is the Christ, has defeated the devil 100%. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 1, verse 4. Jesus, the Bible says that the resurrection was a testimony to you and me that he indeed is the Son of God. Therefore, he is God. And if he is God, then God is the one that solved the problem of man. Indeed, it has been God. Hallelujah. That's why the, the scripture in Romans says that through the spirit of holiness, he was appointed the son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead. So, on the cross when Jesus died, he completed the work of the Christ. The resurrection was the work of the father. Hallelujah. The resurrection, because Jesus finished on the cross the resurrection was the work of the father hallelujah by the power of the holy spirit and why did he do that he wanted to show you he wanted to show me that this jesus that you saw working in israel that performed miracles he is the very son of god he is the messiah hallelujah look at how Look at how God wants us to believe in His Son. Look at how God wants us to... Ah. How terrible will it be if you refuse to believe in the only Son of God? After all the testimony that God showed us, that God confirmed to us, that God proved to us, even by the resurrection of His Son, how terrible will it be? How terrible will it be? It testified to us. This is a testimony of God. Is God a liar? Is God a liar? Here he is testifying to us. He's testifying to humanity that Jesus is the Son of God. That Jesus is the Messiah. Hallelujah. And this message is the one that makes our faith sure. That's why if you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17 to 19, it says, uh, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who are fallen asleep, are who are fallen asleep in Christ are lost. He said, if only we can have hope in this life, if only we can have hope in Christ, if only we can have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. If only you can have hope in Christ, if only you can hold on to this faith, if only you can believe, and believe more and more that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. If only you can believe. If only you can have hope in Him. Which hope? Hope for the resurrection. Hallelujah. 
if only we can have hope in him. And we cannot have hope in him if we do not believe. Hallelujah. So there are so many blessings that comes to us through the resurrection. Hallelujah. There are so many blessings. That's why in Acts of Apostles, chapter 17, verse 13, somebody read that scripture. He has said the day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. Hallelujah. He has of this to all men by raising him from the dead. The first blessing is that there is an appointed time that there will be judgment. And that judgment is going to be with justice by the one he appointed. Who is that? That is Jesus, who is the Messiah. He understands our weaknesses. He came on earth here, he lived with us. When you are hungry, he understands you. Hallelujah. Because he was also hungry. If people hurt you, he understands you. If you are being persecuted, he knows. So the Bible says that he will judge the world with justice. Hallelujah. He will judge the world. What a blessing. What a blessing to have such a judge. Who will judge us with the justice? And now that we are in him. Hallelujah. Oh, it is well with me. It is well with me. It is well with me. I am not afraid. I am not afraid of that day. Because I have a king. I have a judge. Hallelujah. Who, who knows me. Who understands me. Who has been appointed by God. Who is the Christ. Who laid down his life for me. Many people fear judgment day. Because their faith is not right. The second blessing, Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Hallelujah. Justification is the second blessing. Say justification. Hallelujah. Say I have been declared justified. I have been declared just. Justification is a court word, is a court term. Is a term that is used to declare somebody who has done something wrong, innocent, by the basis of something. Hallelujah. So here we see that the resurrection is a proof to us that we have been justified because all our sin has already been punished 100% on Christ when he was on the cross. So we are justified. Romans chapter 5 verse 9 to 10. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we receive from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Hallelujah. So we see another blessing is that we are saved from the wrath of God in him. Hallelujah. In him we are saved from the wrath of God. Just like Noah and his family. They were saved from the wrath of God because they were in the act. Hallelujah. So we are also saved from the wrath of God. Not only that, we have also been reconciled by the resurrection. Hallelujah. It's a confirmation that we have been reconciled. Not only that, we, uh, in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, we see that Hallelujah. 
We see here the blessing that we have life, divine life in our mortal bodies. This earthen vessel, hallelujah. This earthen vessel now have divine life. What a blessing. What a blessing, hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. Hallelujah. Another blessing here is that our future resurrection is sure. It is sure. Hallelujah. We know that we are going to rise and we shall, we shall be presented together with him in him. Hallelujah. Another scripture, second. Yes. Hallelujah. Here we see that God has made us alive in Christ. He made us alive. Not the, you understand what baptism is. You died with Christ and you rose with Christ. And the life that you have is now a new life. You are a new creation. This is powerful. Hallelujah. And not only that, it also continues to say that He has forgiven us all our sins. What a blessing. That the resurrection proves to me. That the resurrection shows me that all my sins have been forgiven. If you are a terrible sinner and you have been forgiven in such a manner, will you continue to sin again? No. You cannot. And then as I conclude, First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Hallelujah. I said our future is bright. Because we have a new birth. In other words, we are born again. Hallelujah. And we have a living hope. The hope that the resurrection for you and me is sure if we believe in the resurrection. Hallelujah. And finally, first Peter chapter 1, verse 21. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see here that our faith and our hope is in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our faith is in God. Through the Christ, our faith is in God. Praise the living God. So, as I conclude, we see here that God was the judge over the sacrifice that Jesus gave. Oh, yes. He's the one who looked at it, at, at it compared with his notes and his requirement and said, perfect, hallelujah. Yeah. And when he said perfect, what does he mean? He declared him the Christ, he declared him the Son of God, he declared him as the only way that with mankind can be saved. Hallelujah. Yeah. God bless you.